Good afternoon, folks. Ticker guy here. Sticking my head around the corner of the camera. Uh, I want to talk to you about these uh, Z-Wave deadbolts. Uh, this is my little test setup here. We're going to use that today because I'm going to do some pretty obtrusive stuff that would uh, really kind of torque me off if I had to go back and undo it on the uh, operating network here in the house. So, uh, that's a much more complex setup. This one has a grand total of one device on it, and that's this nice little secure quick set uh, lock. And I've got the app up pointing at it. Unfortunately, I can't do it over the internet as opposed to on Wi-Fi because this little controller here that's driving this uh, does not have any outside connectivity on purpose because it frequently runs code that is more than a little unsound. Uh, right now, it happens to be running the production software, but uh, that is not normally the case. And you can see this little stick here that has little flashing lights on it. Uh, that is the actual communication stick that talks to this lock. Okay, so this is operating secure right now. And the way we know this is because I got uh, status here that says that it's open and uh, everything seems to be okay. And, and this is the normal situation that you'd have with, uh, with a lock like this in this kind of a scenario. A uh, couple of things to note. First off is that people have asked, well, what happens if you close it with the switch and the answer is it shows up immediately as having been changed and I also get a notification here it says it was secured local alright so now I can also open it let's do that we'll use code number two which is four fives and it comes up immediately and says opened keypad code number two alright so I always know right away what's going on and of course the status is there as well now let's take another example. Let's say that uh, code number two is your, uh, oh, I don't know, how about your maid? Because you got one of those. You got a lot of money, right? So, and um, this guy, we're, we're going to compromise. We say, well, that's been compromised. So I push a button here on this uh, keypad, and as soon as I do that, immediately the status changes on my phone here to prohibited. Now what does that mean? It means all these buttons don't work. All right, I just shut the entire keypad off. I did it from a remote. Doesn't matter how many buttons you push, doesn't matter whether you have the code or not, doesn't work. Now I can long press again, push the button again, and it's back on. Now importantly, if even if I have this in prohibited mode, okay, as is the case right now, I just stuck it back in prohibited, I can still open and close the lock from the mobile. All right, so you can call me if you're my kid and, and uh, I had to shut the keypad off for some reason and say, hey, Dad, I need you to open that door and uh, I could do that for you from a remote. All right, so that's the basics with the locks. Uh, they are fully supervised. I do not allow the setting or the inspection of the codes from the phone. You can do it from the console up here, which is open. You might have noticed a little bit of scrolling going on there. The reason you cannot do it from the phone is because if you're sitting in a bar or somewhere else and you were to say, what is code number four, and it popped up an old toast message, somebody saw it, now they can break into your house. And that's so smart. So we're going to do this only when you're on a, uh, a terminal where you can be sure that uh, nobody's screwing around with you. The other thing to be aware of is that these, these two devices are both signed into the same account right now. And if I, was, if I had a clickable field on here somewhere, it actually wouldn't work without refreshing that page. And the reason is that there's a cryptographic key that's passed back to the device. It is specific to the next command that gets issued. And since I have two devices that are on the same login account at the moment, this one's stale. Now, that's easily fixed. You can uh, just refresh from the web. And from here, you can also click a button on the app that says Refresh Network Key. It looks like a little refresh thing and that'll go refresh that. So if you get out of sync, if you have them both on, it's easy enough to fix. Doesn't happen if you're not signed in in two places at once in doing things, okay? So if you're just watching it on your screen, no problem. It's only when you're actually executing commands. All right, now let's put this aside because um, I'm about to make my, uh, my phone really mad. You'll probably hear it start to beep at me here. And the reason is I'm going to show you what's going on with this whole S0 security brouhaha it's been going on. That's the real reason for this uh, this video and this post of why I want to show you in video form how this actually works and doesn't. Alright, so right now this thing is it has a name of front door deadbolt. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take it off the network. So I'm going to say remove node 
Oh, now see, there we go. There's that cryptographic key. Requested a resource not found, finally unknown or denied access. Why didn't that work? Because I didn't refresh. All right, so I got to do that because the key had expired. All right, so now I can do a remove node. I'm going to turn this guy around. The button's right here. We're going to push it. Delete node in progress. Stand by. Comes up right here on the screen. And then a few seconds later, it is going to come back and say, all right, we're all done. Um, and actually, in the log, it's already there. It's just a little slower on the uh, refresh. I can hit this button, the refresh here, and now I've got uh, unit 5 removed, controller's primary. All right, so, and you can see it's gone. The, the green line that was underneath here is missing. All right, so now I'm going to add this back in. Here's where the problem comes in. The best practice for doing this is for you to take this stick out, take it to the device, push the button on the stick, it starts flashing, you push the button on the device. They have to be about three or four inches apart for it to work. And what that does, it, and why it's important, is because the actual cryptographic key has to be gotten into this device. And since there's no keypad on this, there has to be some known way to do that. That's a problem. That means that this is potentially interceptable while that key is being sent. After that, it's safe. However, during that brief moment of time, about 100 milliseconds, if you get the timing just right, you can pick that key off. So the problem is, what if you don't have a removable stick and a battery? Well, people are slobs. And these companies built these things with wall warts or whatever have you. No backup batteries, so you can't unplug them and take them over to this thing. So what they do is they allow you to include over the network without having to take the stick out. Nice idea, except for this problem. And this is what people are talking about. I might help if I could type. Add node, we're ready to add node, we push the button, add node in process, stand by, unit discovered, controller's primary, and then there's a thing up here that says request secure scheme, and a moment later, what you're going to see come up here, scheme AS128, send network key unit 6, that instant in time is when you can pick it off. Now if I refresh, you'll see it, i got a star here, it's got no name yet, because I haven't named it, but that's the problem. This device could be 100 feet away, and it'd be able to pick that key up. So I told this controller to use low power, and it's sitting right next to me on the desk. But I don't have any way to know whether or not it believed me and whether or not it honored my request. And I can't make it do that. So that's a little bit of a problem. So what we've done here, I'm going to go into the, the config file here, um, and I'm going to show you exactly what I've done with the software. We've got a flag that I've put on, and it defaults off. So unless you explicitly tell it that it's okay to do this, it's not going to work. All right? And right now, I have turned it on because I wanted to give you this demonstration. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn that off. I'm going to restart the software because it only reads it when it starts. Got to log back in, of course, because I did restart the software. All right, and in a few seconds, I've got the star back. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove that node. Okay, so I do a remove node. I take it out, and uh, it's gone. And I'm at, well, now see, your phone's complaining because the password's no good anymore, right? I cleared everything. <laughs> That's the way it goes. All right, so now here we are. Now I'm going to say add node again. All right, and I'm not going to use the no secure switch, which is the one that says don't, don't do that. I'm going to leave this on here. So now this is a network capable include. I'm going to push the button. It says, okay, we asked for a secure scheme, uh, but there'd be a little problem here. Okay, unit seven discovered. Notice what's missing. All right, there's there's a line missing here, and the missing line is the one that says, uh, I got a key. There's no key. And if you click up here, you'll see no asterisk. Okay, and what do I got here in the log? Secure mode requested, but disallowed for device 7. So what this means is that the software has said, I'm not going to send that. Why am I not going to send that? Because it might be insecure. Now, here's the important part of this. You are in complete control of when you pair one of these things, these S0 things, because you know you're doing it. The problem with S2, which is what these guys have been talking about, 
is that you might think that's safe, and it is if it works, but if that gets jammed somehow or if the communication's defective or bad, you're going to try to get an S0 key as a fallback because the controller might think you don't know how to do S2. It doesn't have any way to know the difference between no response because you don't know how to do it and no response because somebody jammed the signal. All it knows is it didn't get an answer. It'll try a couple times and it's going to give up. And then because you have backward compatibility, and there's an awful lot of these out there in the world, it's going to go ahead and try to talk to it using this. What I've done is put 100% mitigation into the software, that key never gets sent. You cannot steal what is never transmitted, folks. You make controllers for this marketplace? Here's your answer. Get a hold of me. I've got a 100% solution that totally mitigates this. Even if the manufacturers never fix their stuff, you can't steal any S0 keys as long as you're running home, Damon. That's the story, and have a nice day.